Yesterday we were chatting with the inimitable Michelle Houston, and today the love of her life, Stephen Houston. How nice That's is me. that? How nice That's is wonderful. that to be That's so wonderful. loved? Yes, it's, it is a wonderful thing. It is. Love is yeah. a truly splendid thing, yeah. and I think it's nice that you guys work together because obviously it gives you a lot in common and you yeah. can go to the events together For but sure. I think the paper really is a reflection I was saying to Michelle of, of your personalities in the sense it covers everything it's a serious paper you've got the classified ads you've got the horrors and things that go on in the world like a paper should but at the same time on a local level it's very supportive and that isn't the trend nowadays to be no. that way inclined how do you survive because obviously scandal sells papers, particularly about local people, and you do kind of tend to avoid that whenever possible. We do. I mean, I think uh, it's not something that we have ever highlighted. We report the news, we don't sensationalise the news, and I think that is what people want these days. There's too much with the likes of the, the social media, there's, there's enough sensationalism going on there, and, and TV and etc. But when you're running a local newspaper, I think it's important for the local people that, that you be, you're part of that community that you are promoting that community and not continually um, knocking the community and making it to, out that it's a bad place to live and, and that you know you should be looking elsewhere. We're not about that, we've never been about that. We've always been about promoting the community and the local people uh, and working with all that community. And at the same time, they want to know what's happening, but just give it to them in the, the, as the facts are. I think that is really, it's commendable. And even when we were talking with, um, Jesper Sander Peterson is the president of the Costa Press Club. Was saying, and Michelle mentioned it in her interview. The responsibility of the media doesn't matter how small we are. When you have a voice, at least try not to make mistakes, and certainly not invent or embellish or scandalise things that can only hurt our community. Yeah. When not necessary. Yes, for sure. A lot of people depend now on internet. We have a query. We go to internet. We want to know something? We go to internet. Yeah. But personally, I love a book to touch a book, the smell of a book, and the newspapers nowadays that don't leave your hands covered in whatever. <laughs> Print. <laughs> I, I mean, there's for me to sit down at the weekend when I grab my Euro Weekly and actually have the time. First I go to my Sudoku and I do that and then I read the horoscopes and then I work my way back and read through the paper. There's something very special about a paper. Why do we value so much the newspaper? I think people value it because of the credibility. Um, when people read something in, in, in written form in a newspaper or in a book, um, it says truth. Um, people know that if, if you put something today, you mentioned about social media, if, if you put something on social media or on a website, it's very difficult if you put something that is not, let's say, the truth completely, it's very difficult to do anything about it whatsoever. But obviously if you put things into print, and it's there, you can't take it back, it's, it, it's believable uh, and people trust it. So it's you would like, think people would be more careful with that in mind because would, not everything you, you read so. is true. That's right, it, it, it isn't, it isn't, but people do have that more trust of the written word and I think um, there are in some cases obviously as we've seen in the past, this has been abused. I mean the biggest, um, the biggest Thing that happened with that was was the the, the paper in, in in the UK, the News of the World. They printed something that was totally untrue, and they closed overnight. And you know the problem is is when you're looking in in other parts of the world, and you you know not just in Europe, in in the Far East and everywhere else, you have English newspapers all over the world, local newspapers. And I think sometimes they get away with sensationalising things one on subjects they shouldn't do and also on things and uh, get away with things that they shouldn't really write and if it was in the indigenous language um, they would never be able to write it so uh, you know I think that that is creeping in a little bit and I think that's a spin-off a little bit of what people can get away with on social media so they start to get away with it on social media and on the uh, on, on the internet so it starts to creep in if they've got a product in print that runs alongside it it tends to creep into that as well but you know this is, this is the world we live in at the moment, so we're not joining that club, the Euro Weekly News, we're not. You know, we'll always try and give everybody the truth uh, in the news uh, and report the news and, as I said before, not sensationalise it. We, You're not, not just limited to, to our Costa del Sol, you have 
Six papers? Six newspapers, six regional newspapers now, yeah, for, for the Costa del Sol, for, for the Axarquia region uh, uh, on the other side of Malaga, for up in Almeria as well, and then into the Costa Blanca South edition, which is the Murcia to Alicante region. We've got the North edition as well, that then goes from, from Alicante all the way up to Gandia, which is near Valencia, and the island of Mallorca. And, you know, it's, it's well over 20 years now we've been doing this. Um, and, and we're still here, which is, is incredible, really, when you think about uh, two, two, when we came here, as two very, a lot younger people, <laughs> and, and, and built it up to where we are now. It's great. And it's great, at the end of the day, it's, it's great for the, those communities that they've got that paper that has been there that length of time, so they can trust that paper because it has been around so long. And also it's great for our advertisers because we've got that trust from the readers, then the, the advertising works better because they've got the, that trust in, in the paper itself so they believe things that are in the paper are trustworthy. And it's such a wide distribution in the sense of, it goes so quickly, the Euro Weekly News, but then they get passed around and it's wonderful yeah, to see yeah, the, re the, the readership the reader, that you do The readership have. is huge in comparison with, you know, we, we, we put out 134,000 copies a week but the readership is m more like half a million because of how the papers are passed around, because of where we leave them, where maybe 50 people will read them because they're in a, a doctor's receptionist or a, in a, a, a salon or something like that. So it's really, really effective for our, our company. It's why we continue to grow. Um, it's why in each region that we do, even though we're national, but we're, we have the regional editions, each region we're either the only weekly free newspaper in the region or we are the, the biggest in, in that area for that I region. I mean, it's so content full. The papers are always like bumper papers. There's always a lot to read. It's always very diverse. Yeah. Um, the advertising doesn't overwhelm you. You're not just looking through advert no, after I, advert I, after no. advert. I, I think some people do complain that there's lots of adverts in there, but they forget that in, in most of the papers, there's, it's 100 pages or, or more. And so we try and keep it at 50-50. So therefore, they've got 50 pages of reading material. And if without and that, that without the advertisers, then you wouldn't even have the paper because... That's right, it's the advertisers the work at the it end takes of the day that pays for the paper. To put that paper together. If you ever go down to the offices in Fuencarola, yep. I mean, it's just the amount of people, 24-7 basically, dedicated for to sure. putting those papers for out sure. every week for six editions. The deadlines. It's amazing that you guys have time to have a life, which you do. Obviously, it's good management, a good team. The team's brilliant. I don't know about good management, but the team is really good. Obviously doing something right. Really good. Um, doing something the, right. The, no, the team we've built up over the last 20 years, and, and some, of the, some of our people are, have been with us dearly for all that time, um, and many sort of tens of years. Um, it is fantastic, and they really hold, hold the, the business together uh, and help us, help us run it as it is, you know, because we don't spend all the time in this, the one office in the head office. We are travelling to the other regions uh, to see the other team members, to visit the other offices that we have up and down the coast. Very important, you're keeping it personal, yeah, which again always. it comes back to how you guys are. You make it personal, you keep it personal, which is, I suppose then gets the team behind you. It's like one big happy yeah, family. Yeah. No, it's important that you work with your team and that you work in the communities that you have the newspapers. And then you have some great columnists. Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> we have some fabulous regular columnists, <laughs> of which you are one. Of which I'm one, very happy. My Marbella moment. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah the, the, the thing is with the columnists, it, it's great because, you know, we do have several and the different columnists for several different regions and people get... They, they like to go and read those columns because it's something interesting about their area every week or it's about interesting subjects that perhaps nobody else touches on. You know? Again, so personalising. It's personalising. Personalising and region, being part yeah. of the community yeah. and part of what everything exactly, that's going on. Exactly. People think newspapers, particularly one as established and as emblematic as the Euro Weekly News, to advertise, oh God, I can't afford that, I don't have an advertising budget. When things are hard, the last thing to stop is advertising. If people don't know you're there, right? Then no, that, they will that's they? it. I mean, obviously, you've got the the internet, and people turn to to, to social media and to Facebook, and things like this. Um, we obviously, as you're a weekly, we are in that in that marketplace. We have a our, our very very active um, Facebook now. Uh, we have a, a social media team. From January now, we're going to offer social media campaigns to our clients as well. Um, we've grown our now, the Euro Weekly Facebook is now over 54,000 likes uh, and followers. Uh, and in the last six months, 
we've reached over 30 million. The reach of our Facebook has been over 30 million people in and around Europe. So that is a way we're going to help people in the future. But from the paper point of view, the paper will always carry on because it gives credibility. And you're right, people say, oh, well, I can't afford to advertise. But hey, when, you, when your business is good, you can afford it, you need to do it. When your business is quiet, you need to have that budget. Because if your business is quiet, if you don't tell people you're around, then they're never going to know that, that, that you're there. Yeah, uh, and I have to important. say that having... And budgets are, you know, budgets are from, from pennies a day up to whatever you want yeah, and to that's do. the thing I was going to say it can be from pennies a day yeah. and for things to really work and people to take the message it needs consistency and repetition <coughs> excuse me and the Euro Weekly News is a great way to get that it's repetition. the best way it's the it's best the way best every way. single week a new edition <laughs> every week 52 weeks of the year yeah. thank you so much Stephen congratulations no problem. and Merry thank Christmas you very, Merry Christmas to you oh, such a gentleman no <laughs> wonder she loves him Well, that's it for another week. A big thank you to our wonderful guests. It's been really fascinating meeting them all. Remember, you can watch recordings of Marbella now from the RTV uh, website, which is rtvmarbella.tv. Also, you can go straight to my website, nicoleking.es, for links to the programme and also to my column in the Euro Weekly News, Marbella Moments. I hope you take care of yourselves, be nice to each other, and we'll be back with you once again next week for another Marbella Now. Hasta entonces. One, one.